Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, Developer Advocate at Dremio. Welcome to video number three in this hands-on with Iceberg course. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to show you sort of how to do branching and merging with Nessie. So again, Nessie is what we are using as our Iceberg catalog. Okay, so Project Nessie is the open source project. This is where you find the documents or the documentation for Project Nessie if you want to kind of learn more. Project Nessie is also the underlying uh, technology underlying um, Dremio Arctic, which is Dremio's catalog service. So you get all the branching and merging we're going to go by in this video with Dremio Arctic, but you also, it's, it's cloud deployed, so you don't have to deploy your own. And on top of it, you get auto, things like automated table optimization, a really cool UI for managing your commits and merges and rollbacks and all that kind of fun stuff, um, just so you're aware that that exists. But let's actually try this out. So again, in your repo, in the lesson code folder, you'll find like a lesson 2.md that's going to have the code for this lesson. Okay, so we're going to go back to our notebook. Okay, let's go into notebooks. Let's create another notebook. So Python 3. Okay, we're going to call it lesson 2. This is going to be our lesson 2. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab that code from the lesson 2 mark down here. Okay, and just grab that code minus the back ticks. Okay, and keep in mind that this these features are specific to the Nessie catalog. So if you're using a different catalog with Apache Iceberg, these features, this particular branching merging feature doesn't exist. It's specific to the combination of Iceberg with uh, the Nessie catalog. Okay. But if we take a look at, nope, that's actually, I think, lesson one, looking at it, yeah. Uh, wrong or did I copy into the wrong place I probably did, did you, oh no I, I have it over here I haven't put the code there yet cool 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 so let's do that okay now basically basically it starts out the same as before we're basically just setting up our catalog that's always going to be sort of the way you would want to start out your PySpark scripts you set up your catalogs that you're using during that spark session Okay, um, basic what I'm doing here is I'm creating another copy of that CSV table uh, for this particular example. Okay, and then here's where things start to change. We're going to create a branch. So again, in Nessie, you can isolate things and create a branch. So first what we're doing is we're running a count query um, to show you. Let me get rid of this query here. Okay, we're running a count query. Okay, so that way we can see how many records are in the table before we make changes to the table. But instead of making changes directly to the table, we're going to create a branch. The cool thing about creating a branch allows us to isolate the changes we're about to make. So that way, if we don't like the changes or we don't want to keep those changes, we don't have to. We can always just go back to the main branch. The main branch is untouched. Um, you know, basically, if we're happy with the changes, then we'll be able to merge later on. Okay, so this will show us our count before we make any changes. Then we're going to go create a branch called Lesson 2. Okay, then we're going to use switch over to Lesson 2. Okay, and then in my case, I've already created this branch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this just a little bit for this demonstration. So I'm going to call this like lesson two, two. Okay, just so that way, because um, I've already created the branch. So technically I created the branch from an earlier state. Um, so just to avoid any issues with that. Okay, but we're going to create the branch. And then what's going to happen is that we're going to switch to that branch saying, hey, I want to use this branch going forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all records representing competitors from France. Okay. Um, so basically, we're going to do that deletion. Then we're going to run that count. So you can see that the count has changed. Okay. So the count has changed. Then we're going to switch over back to the main branch, run that count again. So you can see that the count has not changed on the main branch. Okay. Then we're going to merge those changes, and then we're going to query the count of in from that branch again. Okay, so you can see that hey, once we merge in the changes, those changes did take take hold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this. Okay, and it's going to start doing what we tell it to do. Okay, so we can go down here. We can kind of follow it, see the output as we go. Okay. Just give it a moment for Spark to do its thing. Because again, right now we're running this all from our laptop. So it's using our laptop's resources to run all this compute when software like Spark and Dremio is generally meant to be running on clusters of computer um, and are optimized for that kind of sort of para, uh, multi uh, concurrency, uh, massively parallel kind of uh, use case. 
Okay, so we see that we start off with about this many records, so about a little over 300,000 records. Okay, and now it's doing the delete, which is going to take a second because it's going through all the records, identifying which ones need to be deleted with the with that about particular value. Okay, so that's how many records we have after the deletion, but that's on the experimental branch. Okay, and then here's how many are on the main branch. Okay, then we merge, and then generally, like if I run that last query again, you'll see that it did it did actually change. Okay, so let's see here. I just want to run this again. Okay. There we go. It is running. And you see, like, now that last query, it the, basically the query from the main branch does reflect sort of that lower count because we merged in those changes when we ran this query right here. And we merged those commits over from that, main, uh, from that lesson 22 branch uh, over to here. So just keep that in mind. That's, 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 that's all it takes. And the cool thing about that is that I can, you're not taking commits at the table level. You can do that. There is an iceberg feature where you can track commits, where you can, you know, do branching at the table level. But when you're doing it at the catalog level, I can make changes to multiple tables. So what I can do is I can change, make changes to all my tables and then merge them all at the same time, which allows me to execute patterns like uh, multi-table transactions, but also allows me to do multi-table rollbacks. If I need to like go back and undo a mistake, allows me to do multi-table tagging because you can also tag commits. If you want to create a, a commit that you plan on using, you know, I want to use that particular state of the, of the catalog a lot. I can create branches that don't require me making a full copy of the table. So other people can experiment and they can do, you know, they can delete things, update records to their heart's content without affecting what everyone else is querying. So that's, that's a really, really nice feature. Okay. So that should show you sort of how that works. As you can see, like the queries themselves are pretty straightforward. Okay. And that's another beauty of Nessie as a whole, because you get to do all of this in SQL. So there's no having to hop, there's no context switching between like SQL and Java or SQL and Python. Um, you just write very sort of intuitive SQL statements um, to get this done. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Have a great one and enjoy.